I recently made this gearbox for a NEMA 17 stepper motor. My main goal was to make a sturdy and compact gearbox that would have as little backlash as possible, meaning that when the motor is not moving, the output shaft should ideally be locked in place, not being able to wiggle back and forth. And this is good for getting precise movements at both large and small scale. In this video I'll show you my design of the gearbox. We will see how well it performs and we will have a look at how we can improve on the design. This is just the first prototype and it's far from perfect. But great design is very much trial and error and I want to bring you along in the process. Because this is the fun part. The challenge is that the gearbox has to be 3D printed. And most of the gearbox designs I see are based on interlocking 3D printed gears, like the very popular planetary gearboxes. And these are great and very compact, but from my experience there will always be some backlash when having plastic gears against each other, because you can't really push the tolerances that far with 3D printed parts. So my solution to this problem was to separate the gears and use belts to connect them instead. This method also reduces noise and friction, so the gears shouldn't wear down too quickly. This only works though if the belts are tightened appropriately. So to do this I designed these sliding pieces fitted with 5mm ball bearings. They are integrated in the gearbox enclosure and they give me the ability to adjust the position of the second axis and hence the tightness of the belts. From here the mechanism is quite straightforward. We have two identical sets of gears in the ratio of 24 to 60 teeth, or simply a ratio of 2 to 5. Having these in series, the overall gear reduction becomes 1 to 6.25. It's not a pretty number, but it gives me a very convenient 20,000 steps per rotation, when the stepper motor is in 1 16th microstepping mode. To make things more compact, I had the idea to let the output gear rest on the shaft of the stepper motor, of course with a ball bearing in between. This connection also helps to improve the angular stability of the output shaft. The output shaft is mounted onto a large ball bearing with an inner diameter of 25mm. This is then sandwiched between two 3D printed parts to hold it in place. Of course I made some mistakes that I only realized after printing. I didn't make the case long enough to accommodate for the gears under tension. I fixed this just by removing some material on the inside of the case. I also realized that I needed some holes to be able to check the belt tension when tightening, otherwise it would be blind guesswork. So I had to drill these out and I also added some holes just to be able to observe the gearbox action. I tried smoothing them with a soldering iron, but it didn't go that well. Lastly, I didn't exactly nail the tolerances on the large bolt bearing, so I also had to do some modifications here. But for the sake of getting to that first prototype, it was a much better solution to make these modifications than to reprint everything, trying to make it perfect in the first run. So. How does it perform? The first thing to do is of course to see it in action and just move it around. And by the looks of things it performs very good. It's actually pretty silent, except for some occasional clicking. Which I think comes from the tensioning parts. Otherwise it moves beautifully and with no apparent vibrations or internal friction. So far so good. But what if we zoom in a bit and test some small movements? Here I'm moving it 10 steps, or just 0.18 degrees in each direction. And this seems pretty promising as well. So let's move on and test the backlash. This is what I've been most excited to have a look at. Here I'm trying to move the lever attached to the output shaft, and with quite some force actually. It seems to move a millimeter in each direction. But it's important to point out that it's not at all loose. 
So in terms of backlash, this performance is brilliant. I think the movement rather stems from the fact that the gearbox isn't made of metal and therefore it will have a bit of flexibility. So I'm pretty satisfied with the performance here as well. The last thing to test is the angular stability, meaning how much can it move in other directions. Of course, it should not be able to do that. And the test shows that this is very much the case. And that's quite a big thing, because it means that my design generally is stable and rigid in all directions. It would not mean a lot to have precise movement in one axis, if it's just wiggling around from side to side in the two other axes. So, this is good. So the test shows that my design wasn't completely off. The idea to use belts and tension seems to yield a very consistent result, but there are a lot of room for improvement. So here I'm gonna go over what I want to change or add in the next version. First of all, the case. It has many problems, as I mentioned earlier. I need to make it a bit longer, so the gears actually fit in there when tightened. I also need to add some holes to be able to access the gears, and I need to work on the tolerances in some places. I also want to change the design of the tensioning pieces. They are not completely held in place, and I think this is causing the annoying clicking sounds. In terms of gearing, I want to increase it a bit to make the gearbox stronger, but this will also make it slower. Luckily we have plenty of speed right now, so I think it will be a good trade-off. Another thing I would like is some kind of position feedback, to make it possible to go to a fixed start position every time I use the gearbox. This can be achieved in many ways, but the least intrusive way I can come up with is to use a Hall effect sensor and a magnet. In this way I will be able to find the start position, but from there I won't be able to track the movement. I will therefore completely rely on the stepper motor not to lose any steps. A better solution would be to use an absolute encoder. In this way I would always know the position of the output shaft. And maybe I'll try this in future versions, but not in the next one, because it will require the whole design to be changed, and I want to perfect this first. So this is pretty much what I want to do with the next version. If these changes manage to solve many of the current problems in the design, I will of course upload the design to Thingiverse, so you can make your own. If you have any thoughts or suggestions for the next version, please do leave a comment. And if you liked this video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos.